We bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of the servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. See me through, Lord Jesus, see me through. Oh, see me through, see me through. Lord Jesus, see me through. There is a race. There is a race. I must run. There's a victory. There's a victory to be won. Give me power. Give me power. Oh, I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Lord, help us to attain that glory. You have set before us thrones, crowns, beautiful buildings, positions in heavenly places so that we can sit with you and all the sorrow all the memories of pains and disappointments will be gone and they will be overtaken by the joy of heaven lord help us to attain help us to see you even as we round off our journey here on earth could be now could be many years to come Help us to assimilate your word in our hearts. Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. Don't allow me to speak to your children. Do the talking yourself. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Shout hallelujah. Okay, you are welcome to church in Jesus' name. Today we are considering a topic comparing the present with the future of the believer. Comparing the present and the future of the believer. Do we have believers in the house? If you are a believer, wave your hand and shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The test is Romans chapter 8. We will read verses 2. Verses 18 and 22. For I reckon that the suffering of those present times are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Verse 22. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. Praise the Lord. Comparing the present with the future of the believer. We are all believers here. We live in a time. And we want to consider this particular time and compare it with the time that is coming ahead of us. These two times... First, the one on earth, in which we live and fight as soldiers, in which we suffer pains and persecution. It's a time that we have to carry out the will of our master, Jesus Christ. It is a time that we have to work out our salvation with fear and what? And trembling. It is a time that we have to serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Then the other time, the future of the believer is the time that is the time of afterlife. That means after now, how is it going to be? Remember what we are considering the future and the present time. 
is of who? Of the believer, not of the unbeliever. A believer is someone, let me just say a Christian or a believer is someone who heard the gospel of Jesus Christ some time ago, received the word with gladness, was convinced and convicted, became converted, and then goes for baptism, is born again, and continues in the teaching and doctrine of the Lord. It's not someone that just confessed Jesus Christ and prayed the sinner's prayer that Lord Jesus come into my heart. I've given my life to you and goes back to the former life. That is not the person we are talking about today. A believer is not someone that was directed to St. Andrew's Cathedral that, please, we know you have a lot of troubles. Go there. They will help you there. There are big men in that church. That is not the believer we are talking about. Believer we are talking about today is someone who has accepted Jesus Christ as personal Lord and Savior. Believer is not someone who is looking for position and want to be known or somebody that wants to hide in the church. Meanwhile, they are courtes outside the church. That is not what we are considering today. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. The passage we read, Paul wrote to the Corinth, the Roman church. And he told them that, listen, oh, for now we have to suffer. But this moment that I am writing to you, the glory that will be revealed can't be compared with the sorrow and the pains, the suffering that we pass through now. It is far incomparable. We can't compare it. For now, we groan. We suffer pain. We suffer persecution. But the time is coming when we shall be overtaken by the joy of heaven, by the bliss of heaven. A lot of times Christians suffer. And when they look at the suffering, the huge size of tears that they shed every day, some easily give up. But I want to thank God for those who don't give up at all. May the Lord strengthen them in Jesus' name. Amen. The present time, the time we live in, is a time of suffering. If you are familiar with the would-be three disciples, three would-be disciples that met Jesus. Master, I want to follow you. Jesus said, listen, it is not bread and tea. It is not butter and wine. Forces, they have hosts, the best of the air. They have nests to lay their head, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay their head. Jesus did not, at any point in time, tell us that by the time that we receive him and become believers, everything is going to be okay with us and that we shall be celebrities and that everybody is going to love us. He didn't tell us like that. He told us that everybody is going to hate you on account of me. They shall bring you before governors. You shall be persecuted. In the world, you shall have tribulation, but be of good share. I have overcome the world. And he told us that, behold, I go and prepare a place for you. Listen, if here, if this world had been a very good place, Jesus wouldn't have gone up there to prepare a place for us. He told us that we should endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. And even, in fact, the book of Hebrews chapter 12 verse 4 says that in your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted to the point of shedding your blood. It means that in course of protecting our salvation, there are situations that we demand us shedding our blood, giving up our lives. That is the time we are living in. And Revelation chapter 12, Revelation 12, 11. You can just quickly open to Revelation 12, 11. It says, and they overcame him by the blood of a lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. It is a time that believers don't love their lives. Jesus told them, he told us in his word, that whosoever 
save his life. Whosoever lost his life so much and decided to save it will definitely lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake, we do what? We have it. It is a time that we count ourselves, our very lives, our life in this world as nothing for the sake of the glory that will be revealed after now. Philippians chapter 2 tells us that our attitude should be as that of Christ. Who for the joy set before him, he himself saw the joy that was set before him and overlooked death, even the death on the cross. He saw all the jesting, he saw the cup, the cup of jesting, the cup of disgrace. Jesus did not give up. He was looking at the glory that was said before him. And our attitude should be as that of Christ. We should not love our lives so much in this present time because the real life of the human being is not this one. It's not this one. If I the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 40, I like that passage so much. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 6. He said, the voice said, cry. And he said, what shall I cry? What you should cry? Okay, cry like this. Cry that all flesh is grass. And all the goodliness thereof is as the flower of what? Of the feed. The life we carry today. It's like, the Bible says, it's like ordinary grass. Like the flower of the field. In the morning, it's usually very beautiful. But in the evening, after the scorching of the sun, you see it withering away and falling off. I saw an elderly man recently. He sat close to me. I can't remember exactly where I was. And when I looked at him and saw the wrinkles in his body, in all over him, I looked at him and said, well, so this is how life is. I will become like this one day. Old age is good. It's a blessing. But there are challenges. If you try it, ask the Lord to keep you for 250 years. You will know what I'm talking about. It is then you start counting people. That both of you attended school at the same time, that are no more. You will be the one asking God to come and take you. All flesh is grass. And the glory of them all is like the flower of the feet. There is one military governor, head of state of Nigeria. He is old today. If you see him today, when I saw him on a wheelchair, I asked myself, where is the power? Where is the power? That is life. It is a time of suffering. It's a time of pain. We are passing through this world momentarily. We are just passing through. By October this year, I'll be 35 years old. But I tell you, the time is running so fast. So fast. I could remember the things that happened when I was 10 years old. It's like 10 years, uh, 20 years ago was so close. I'm moving. I'm going. There is no time. We think we have time, but there is no time. There is no time. Eternity is eternity. Do you know the meaning of eternity? Eternity is time. That came out of no time. That has no beginning and has no ending. The life we live here on earth. In fact, the timepiece we have, the clock, is just a fragment of eternity. So, death is the beginning of the real life. It is not the end of life. Sometimes when we see people die, yes, people must die. Even young and old, they must do what? 
But we pray that any death should be according to God's will. People must die. Sometimes when we see people die, we just condemn God and ask God why. Why? God is wiser than us. In fact, I'm not supposed to say this, but let me just say something briefly about it. You know, a uh, few days ago, our mommy departed. Mrs. Ruth Umukoro. You are aware, right? Fine. When she was healthy, when a time came, she was very healthy. I had a dream. And they wore her white and white, preparing her for baptism. So I, when I woke up, I met our father, the vicar. I told him, I said, look at the dream I had. He asked me, when did you have this dream? Because she's doing very well now. I said, it's now. Not long ago, he was just weak. I told him, since I had a dream, my mind is divided. That is one. The night she gave up her ghost, I had another dream. I was not aware. I was not aware. She passed on around two, five minutes after two, about that time. I was not aware. The vicar told me he didn't want to disturb me that I should have my rest. But the rest is they were praying and battling, asking God to just change the handwriting. But that day, I had a dream. I saw Vika here. They brought a dead baby. So the baby, the body was white. I was passing by, going to the lady chapel. When they brought the baby, I said, why would they bring this dead baby to Vika? This baby is already gone. In the morning, Anna learned she left. The following day, I was in the altar. I was trying to celebrate Holy Communion. May I bring my mouth down because I'm not supposed to celebrate Holy Communion. Now, dream more. Uh -huh. Now, priests, they celebrate Holy Communion. <laughs> so the vicar just told me, I'll be celebrating the Holy Communion, I will come. Before I celebrated the Holy Communion, there were people in the church, and I was talking to them that you don't need to be sad. This is not the time to be sorrowful. But truthfully speaking, I did not know the person who were to bury. There was no casket. The dead body was not present, but we came here for a funeral service. And I was preaching. Do you know? That is just my own account. Too. People have different, different accounts. And there could be people who are asking God. In fact, one asked me this week that is God. He said, why? How could God do that? How could God do that? I don't know this kind of God we serve because even the juju worshippers, they have full protection from their juju. Why would God behave like this? <laughs> Listen, even me, I used to tell my mother and I will continue to tell her that mama, I can die anytime or this work I'm doing, na soldier work. It's soldier's work, it's not office work. I can go anytime. So in case I die, don't cry. Me, I have made up my mind. Me, some of those prayers, I will not die. Me, I don't pray them. I don't. I'm on the battlefield. I know. Are you going back to your mother's womb? Where are you going to? The grave. We are going to the grave. We should not deceive ourselves. If you are a soldier of Jesus Christ, be ready to die at any time. Your prayer should be, you should die well and go and meet the one that sent you into this world. There is a place that is prepared for us. Our attention has been carried away so much that many of us no longer think about heaven. The, the suffering of this present time cannot be compared with the glory that is set before us. Somebody died. Somebody died so that we can inherit heaven. Let me tell you. I tell people that there is no amount of good you do on earth qualifies you for heaven. Because the place is just too beautiful. We have heard stories of people who, by the grace of God, transported into heaven. It's biblical. Even Paul himself was taken up out of his body. Many 
of them, when they come, when they return, they will say the place is too beautiful. In fact, I told them that I don't want to come back. Who will come back? Will you come back? Come back to do what? To eat ice fish? Me. In those days, when people go to the market, ice fish was for the poor people. Do you remember? Ice fish was for the poor people. And when people are, will buy ice fish that time, they will be pretending somehow. The big men were buying uh, all this river fish, fresh fish. Today, people pack their jeep without shame anymore and buy ice fish. So the world we live in today is a world of ice fish. Me, if I get there, I will not negotiate to come back. Even now, if God tells me come, I will not ask him for extra minutes. I heard, I heard. What am I doing here? Some of us who are poor, we think that when you have money or when you have children, when you have degree, your problem is over. It's a lie. Go close to those who are poor. If they shoot a gun now, you will see that some old men who have good money in their bank account will receive supernatural strength to fly. But the poor people, they will say, who shoots? Is it Boko Haram? Where? And they are going there. Because, see, if you kidnap some people, you will be the one to feed them. <laughs> this is the world we are living in. Both poor and rich, they are groaning in pains. There is no peace. Bogo, bogo, bogo. Ambogo, abogo, e mara ganadu, e amona. I was talking one day, and um, one man of God was there, and I was saying, I pray one prayer this today. I pray it every time. In fact, today I prayed it, and I said, uh, I used to pray, and I prayed it today. That God, if you know I will fall tomorrow and never rise again, take my life today. And the man of God looked at me and said, Osana, don't you see that something is wrong with your head? We asked you to marry, you said no. If you have a wife and you have children, your brain will not reason like this. If you have people who are telling you, Daddy, go and come back, you will not talk like this. Do you know I was weeping inside? I was weeping inside of me. I was weeping. After then, I prayed for him. Heaven. That is why there are some of us who can carry cutlass because somebody is taking your wife from you. And if you go to Babalawo, because somebody is dragging your money with you. What shall it profit a man? If he gains the whole world, and loses his soul. A lot of us are going to hell. Many of us. Over 50% of us. Are going to hell. And nobody cares. When I look at. Majority of men of God. Celebrating I look at them. I said. Something is wrong with us men of God. Something is wrong with us. Who we have children and 50, over 50% of them are not doing well. And you are happy that you have children. If not for the pocket. Who we have children that are doing Yahoo business, Yahoo Plus. And it will be proud that his children are riding vehicles. Don't you know that madness will end it? And they will say, this is the father of that mad boy. The most set of deceived Persons in the world, a lot of times, are pastors. I'm not saying there are not many good pastors. There are. There are good pastors, but the fake ones are too much. And when I see the damage they do to the kingdom of God, I grow annoyed. Sometimes I say, God, why don't you make me two minutes God? And see what will happen in the world. 
But God is all wise. He knows what he is doing. May the Lord help us. Before we round off, let's open our Bibles to Isaiah 35. Some people died for Christianity before Christianity came to us. And for Christianity to continue, the saints should continue to die. It's scriptural. So we will not fear. No matter what comes, whether in life or in death, we are the Lord's. In fact, all my Bibles, if you open the first page, what you see is my motto. Philippians 1.21 For to me, to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Isaiah 35, verse 5, 35, 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart, and the tongue of the dumb sing. For in the wilderness shall waters break out, and streams in the desert. If you are on earth and you are poor, you have no education. Probably you are lame, like me that has one leg now. And those who are blind, you have another opportunity to recover from these things. If the rapture takes place now, my artificial leg will drop. Those who are lame, they will fly. Jesus said, we shall have the bodies of angels. And 1 John 3, 2, I think, says that we don't know what form we shall be. But we know that when he comes, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. Jesus is not lame. Jesus is not blind. The soul can never be crippled. Stop blaming people. Know that there is a crown of glory set ahead of us. Nobody should take your crown. Your husband should not take your crown. Your wife should not take your crown. Even your very life should not take your crown. Because it shall be all glorious, too glorious for us to stand before the God of heaven and earth. And he will tell us, in the presence of his holy angels, well done. Good and faithful servants. Be on your feet as we pray. A lot of times I don't like when people clap after a message. What we need to do, I'm not saying you should not appreciate good things. I'm not saying we should not clap and glorify God. But a lot of times people clap and clap the message away. When we hear the message of God, let us look inwards. Father, we want to thank you. Help us to disvalue our lives because of you. We know there is a crown. There is a glory that is set before us. Help us to look unto you, the author, and finish of our faith. May our government Political parties not stop us. May the troubles in the world not stop us. Help us to follow to the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at hosannadavid at ymail.com or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.